All right, this is Greg Kimball with the Final Percent Podcast, and we are coming to you live from TFP Studios, a.k.a. my man cave, in my house. I uh, wanted to kind of break down today the idea of your head versus your heart. And I think that it is important to understand it is permeating our entire existence if we start recognizing these things and we'll, let's go to a sales situation if you want to buy something if you want to take something home almost always you are making that decision based on a emotional response you are you just know you want it you 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 crave it you get into you know acquisition syndrome if you will and and you want to you know achieve whatever it is and then we justify it with logic and i think it's important to recognize when these things are happening but it's not just in sales that's why you know going to sales if you will um that's why you get into buyer's remorse because you know you really wanted it you did the compulsive thing and then all of a sudden you're thinking about what you actually did and you're like wow that didn't make much sense but we are also doing it in relationships and i think relationships um you're constantly selling yourself. They're constantly selling themselves to you. That's why a lot of times you'll see people put up scoreboards, if you will. They are, you know, comparing, contrasting. I gave you 14 I love yous. You only said I love you 12 times to me. And, you know, therefore I'm winning. Um, but it's just not the case. But if you look at it, the, the head part of it, that's your logic part of it, it actually becomes illogical. It actually becomes counterproductive, counterintuitive, because your heart are things that you know. You know that this person loves you. You know that you want to transcend where you're at and you want them by your side. You know that you want to wake up and, and have them in your, your, uh, your life. And somewhere along the lines, you start telling yourself stories and uh, I mean, this is this is you, how many times have you heard a, a self-help person say, well, that's a story you tell yourself. It's, it's kind of true. But if we go deeper into that concept, we start to recognize that everything that messes up our life is a story. Now, what do I mean by the the story? The story is, oh, this person doesn't love me enough. This person doesn't do what I do. Um this person isn't good enough for me. I'm too good for that person. Um, this person doesn't care like I care. This person doesn't understand. And those are all stories. And because whether you realize it or not, your brain is trying to make sure that you are not a liar. So when you tell yourself a story, your brain goes into overdrive trying to make that true. So it's kind of like, you know, you buy a brand new car, you drive around, and now all of a sudden you realize that everybody owns that car. You're like, I never knew that there were this many people on the road with this car. That's your reticular activating system making you aware of certain things. So then you're aware that all of these things are happening and present. The same thing happens when you tell yourself a story. If you say, oh man, this person's a real piece of crap to me, your brain is going to go to work making that statement true, making that story true. So we have to really change what we focus on. We have to focus on the right things, focus on the good things, and then your brain will go to work making that true. So if we recognize that our heart is a state that we're in, our heart are things that we know, and then our head starts telling us stories which can start changing our heart. And our heart is basically the foundation for our belief system. So if you start telling yourself, you know, this person's not right for me. This person's not good. This deal's not good. It, it, it is going to start overcoming what you already know to be true. Now, sometimes, yes, that's a good thing. But we need to recognize if 
we are having trouble, say, with our friends or employees or our boss, and you go find the most negative person you know. Why? Because you know that you can vent to them and you know that they are going to back you up and they're going to really get caught up in the gossip. You just added so many stories to your life and your brain is going to start making them true. So that negative person that you talk to is going to be looking at you and say, oh, well, they shouldn't do that to you. And then you go back to work and they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that and they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. When they may not even know what's going on or that you have a problem, who you should actually talk to if you have a problem is the person. But spend some time with yourself and recognize, is this something that is in my head? Or is this something that is in my heart? That's why, you know, infidelity in marriages is so terrible because that's something you know happened. That's something you know to be true. But the thing is, is if we're just talking about your perception, chances are we are talking about a story that you have told yourself and then you have found all of the people in your life that is going to they are going to, you know, confirm your suspicion, confirm what you're thinking. And then all of the actions you are only going to identify and give weight to the actions that support your findings or diagnosis. This is why it's incredibly important when you have a coach, you don't want them to be as committed to your goals as you are because you don't need two people falling apart when something goes wrong. This is also why it's incredibly important to have a coach to be objective because you cannot see yourself in the frame. You cannot understand what's happening to you or for you 90% of the time because you are stuck in your head. And this is why, you know, it's important to recognize when you start story time. And don't get me wrong, stories are incredibly important because they can move people. I recently talked to Nate May and uh, his coach, Brian, and they have this concept, which is just so fantastic. And it says, moved people move people. How powerful is that? That's amazing, right? So. Let's, let's understand, are we being moved in the right direction? And stories move people. But you've got to ask yourself, is this serving me? Is this moving me in the right direction? And then when your reticular activating system in your body fires up, is it making you aware of the right things? And a lot of people focus on the 10% bad that destroy the, the relationship when if they would have focused on the 90% good, they would have a happy relationship, happy friendship, happy um marriage, business, partnership, everything. So this is this has been the Final Percent Podcast. It's just something that's been on my heart. And I think if we can understand the head versus heart, and a lot of people say, follow your heart, but then a lot of people say, hey, make sure you think everything through. How come you speak before you think? All of these different things, you know, those things are constantly flip-flopping and we need to, this is why I always say, hey, you make decisions out of three parts of your life. There's actually four, but you know, we're going to, we're going to keep it at three right now. Your head, your heart, or your gut. And your gut is always right. Your head is right 50% of the time. Your heart is right 50% of the time. And they are opposing because they are put inside of you to create a checks and balance system to see if you have become the person that can follow their gut. Have you become that person yet so that you can follow what you know is right down in your gut? So you've got your gut got your heart and you've got your head. So anyway, this has been the final percent podcast. Just a little bit of a, a nugget of wisdom that uh, I think could serve a lot of people. It served me, helped me navigate many things. And I hope you have a fantastic, incredible, amazing, wonderful, stupendous day. <laughs>